Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a quick video to show you how to clean up background noise or prevent background noise or dampen background noise in your Shadow Play recordings or however you record. Actually, I'm told it works with OBS, although I haven't tried it with OBS. Uh, but basically how to get rid of background noise at the source using a couple of tools that you probably haven't or may not have heard of. Let me just minimize this window and we'll talk about it. The two tools that I'm going to show you are called Noise Gator and uh, not Virtual Audio Cable, but a similar program. These two work in concert to make what's called a noise gate. A noise gate is a, it's sort of a real-time monitor that monitors the microphone, and when it senses that there's nobody talking, it just cuts the audio completely so any background noise, hiss, static, whatever, does not get through the mic. And I'll show you Noise Gator just working here. So this is what the noise gator window looks like. And you can probably see this little status open or status closed right up here. You probably also see the little current level thing. And basically when I talk, the status goes to open because there's enough, um, enough volume in my voice to force the noise gate open. But when I stop talking, the status goes to closed. And that way, you know, that way the background noise, the background hiss of my computer's fan and the echo bounces off these sort of not sound dampened, just plain drywall and painted walls. Uh, it doesn't really screw up the recording quite as badly. The settings you see here are the ones that work for me. I have the threshold set to 8 and I also have a 20 millisecond attack time and a 60 millisecond release time. I also have what I assume is a 3 dB boost, which um, 3 dB is roughly equal to twice. So hopefully, you know, not only am I getting a very clean signal off my mic, at least within the limitations of this shitty, awful headset mic on my Turtle Beach X12s that I'm wearing here, uh, but I also get a very, um, well, not loud per se, but very clear, like I'm standing right next to you, and not like I'm standing across the room or across the street or something like that. So I said that there were two programs I wanted to talk to you about. Noise Gator is the first one. It just, it's right there. It's N-O-I-S-E-G-A-T-O-R. It's an open source project, and I highly recommend it. In contrast with another program that I tried, I tried Voice Meter Banana. And not only did it, <laughs> not only did it really lag down my CPU, like I record MechWarrior online. You probably know that. You may have seen my video. Not only did it lag MechWarrior Online down by 10 FPS, and I only get 30 FPS to start, so lagging down to 20 FPS from 30 is awful. Almost makes the game completely unplayable. Um, but in addition to that, just Voice Meter Banana just screwed up my Shadow Play recordings. I couldn't run Shadow Play and Voice Meter Banana at the same time. The Shadow Play recordings were corrupt every time, or at least like 9 times out of 10. And then when I turned off Voice Meter Banana without rebooting my computer, without changing any setting, just turned off Voice Meter Banana and closed it and made another recording, it worked great. So that's my, my personal thing about Voice Meter Banana is I have a potato computer. It's a cruddy old computer. It has a slow CPU. It barely runs MechWarrior Online at 35 FPS at the absolute minimum settings. Voice Meter Banana is not an option for me because it Fs up everything, the game, shadow play, everything. In addition, one other advantage that Noise Gator has over Voice Meter Banana, at least that I feel, is this configurable attack and release. Um, I found that Voice Meter Banana's release time varied according to how loudly I had been speaking. So if I spoke really loud for a really long time, then the release was really long. It was like this trail off, and you could hear the or of the background noise in the background as the, the release was coming off. It was like a, an analog filter or a finite impulse response filter or something. Whereas with Noise Gator, it's just, you know, you've seen this many samples without the threshold, and, uh, well, that's it. Cut it. Doesn't matter how loud the sample before that was. Similarly with the attack time, um, you know, just, just it's 20 milliseconds, period. I really like the way this sounds. I think it sounds way better than my other recordings. And I've actually started to notice other people's YouTube videos that have all this background noise now. 
For instance, one of the people who I like to watch the Minecraft videos for is a guy named Meatwagon22. And I, I totally notice now, and it's totally annoying to me, to watch his Meatycraft Minecraft videos because I can hear the background hiss, and it's awful. All right, so I'm sorry. I got off track there for a minute just talking about Voice Meter Banana, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, the other program that you need. So for reasons that I'm, I don't fully understand, I haven't gone and read the Microsoft SDK documentation or anything, NoiseGator cannot output, cannot make its output available as the, the same way that a sound driver makes its output available. Like you can't set NoiseGator to be your default. Uh, why don't I just show you instead of trying to tell you. So if you go down here to your little um, speaker icon and you right click, you can see playback devices and recording devices. So I'm going to go to recording devices. You can see that there are two things here. There's the recording mixer. And that's my actual sound card output, the recording output from the sound card that's coming from my headset mic. And then you see there's this cable output with this VB Audio virtual cable. So you notice there's no listing in here that says SoundGator. And that's because SoundGator cannot put its output out here in this screen, which means you can't do things like clicking on it and doing set default. That's why you need not just NoiseGator, but you need the virtual audio cable. And the virtual audio cable basically works like this. When you install the virtual audio cable, and note there are several different ones of these and they all have similar names, so it's very confusing. VB Audio Virtual Cable, in my opinion, is the best one. It's super simple to install. You download a tiny, tiny package. I don't remember exactly, but it's like 10 megs or something. And then when you run it, you'll think nothing happens. But the way to check that it actually worked is you go in here to your sound, you right click your little sound icon, you pick Recording Mixer or Playback Mixer, whichever one you want, this window will pop up. Look at, first at playback, scroll down here and look for the cable input. Then look in recording mixer, look for cable output. Basically the way this is going to work is the output of noise gator is going to go into this cable input, which is an actual driver, could be set to the default source and so on. And then the output of that cable, which of course just comes straight from noise gator, is going to be your default. You see the little green check mark here and it says default device. That's going to be your default device. So basically you would click on that. I can't do it right now because I, then the button will gray out because it's already the default. But basically you would click on cable output. Then you come down here and you would set as default. And if you want to set it as default, you know, for communications as well as, I, I don't know what else, recording. This is how you set things up. First you install this VB Audio Virtual Cable. You make sure you see these two devices, the cable input and the cable output. You set up noise gator, its input to be your mic. Now for me, because I use KX project drivers, I get my microphone input from this KX audio recording mixer. Your computer will probably just say something like microphone. It won't be complicated or, or stupid. Your output will be exactly the same as mine. It will be this cable input VB audio virtual cable. What that means is that noise gator is taking its output and feeding it into this virtual cable. And then you go in here, once again, you right click on this, you go to recording devices, you go to this recording tab in the sound control panel, and you'll see this cable output, which is, you know, when you install VB Audio Virtual Cable, this will appear. And then you, know, you just click on that, and then you click on the set default button. It'll be as if your microphone just runs through NoiseGator all the time. Now, there's one more little trap here that I want to advise you guys about. NoiseGator is not a driver. It is not automatically loaded by your computer when your computer starts. So if you want NoiseGator to work, you'll have to put it in your startup folder. I chose not to do that. I chose instead to put a thing in my start menu and just start NoiseGator whenever I want. And that way, if for some reason, I don't want to use NoiseGator, though honestly, it's, it works so well, I don't know why I would not want to use it, but whatever that I just, I start it manually. And I'll, I'll usually do that before MWO because I appreciate, you know, the volume boost and the lack of background hiss it gives to my MWO audio. I would probably use it all the time and pr frankly, I should just put it in the startup menu. So yeah, the only thing I would advise you about is NoiseGator will not start automatically when your computer starts. So you will have to manually start it up every time unless you put it in a startup folder or something like that. The other thing is the first time you run NoiseGator, if this auto activate on start isn't checked, and it won't be. When you first run it, it'll look like that. There'll be no check mark. 
you'll have to click auto activate on start and then you will still have to manually click this activate button to make a noise gator work. And when it is working, you'll see this status open, status closed, status open. You'll know it's working because of that. The current level here, of course, just tells you what the background level of noise is. I found eight worked the best for me. You know, whatever works for you, your microphone or your environment may be louder or quieter than mine. There's usually some kind of background noise in any environment, but whatever. This allows you to cut it out at the source. Just watches your microphone. Whenever there's only background noise, whenever there's less than a certain amount of audio level, it just turns off the audio. Uh, one last thing. You can see there's some noise gator settings here. You click the settings button. I've set mine to minimize on launch and minimize to system tray. This does not cause noise gator to start up as your computer starts up because noise gator is not a driver and it doesn't get loaded with drivers. Noise gator is just a program that you have to start by hand when you want it to start working. Minimize on launch and minimize to system tray just means when you manually start it, it will not bring up this window and it will instead start minimized and it will also minimize itself down here to the system tray. I'll show you how that looks. So you can see down here there's a little NG icon noise gator. You may have to click the little upward triangle chevron to actually make that show. And then if you want to see the control panel, you right click on that and it will bring up these two things, show and exit. I don't know if I mentioned this before, so I'll say it now. Noise gator is open source software. You download it off GitHub. And if any kind of shady download site tries to make you download some browser plugin when you download it, tell them to go fuck off and just go to GitHub and get it. As I was editing this video in Shotcut, I realized I had left out something major about NoiseGator that y'all needed to know. <laughs> and namely that NoiseGator is a Java application, which means in order to run it, you have to have what's called a Java runtime environment. It's just all the files that you need to run a Java program. The Java runtime environment is also called the JRE. And in order to run NoiseGator correctly and make it work right, you need to have the latest version of JRE version 8. So whatever the latest JRE version 8 is, you need to have that before NoiseGator will run correctly on your computer. Now, I hope that doesn't sound complicated because it isn't. If you just Google for JRE 8, JRE the number 8, you'll be able to find it right away. The download is probably 100, 150 megs. It's not that big, although not nearly as small as the NoiseGator download itself, which is tiny. I just wanted to let you guys know that. I apologize for the omission. Um, very stream of consciousness with this stuff. I'm very new to YouTube recording, and so it just slipped my mind. So yeah, uh, make sure that you get the Java runtime environment, aka JRE. Make sure you get the latest Java 8 JRE. And when you install the JRE, it may prompt you to like make your default search engine Yahoo or something along those lines. Just tell it no, that you just want the JRE, just the runtime to run NoiseGator. You don't want any browser pl plugins or anything of that nature. Okay, I'm sorry for the quick interstitial there, and uh, back to the rest of the video. My apologies. So that's it. That's how you use NoiseGator. I think it has certain advantages over microphone banana, and uh, I hope this is useful. And I'm looking forward to making better content and less annoying hiss and other crap in my audio by using NoiseGator. I uh, hope this was helpful, and uh, have a good one.